these issues about this thing called life. We are made in the image and likeness of God. But do we reflect the image of God in the way we dress up, in the way we behave, in the way we, we communicate? In this episode, we will have as our guest an internationally certified image consultant. She is certified by the Association of Image Consultants International and finished her image mastery course at the International Image Institute of Toronto and the Protocol School of Palm Beach. She also finished her philosophical studies in Rome. Please help me in welcoming Jeannie Villegas. Hi, Jeannie. Hi, Rita. Thank you for inviting me today. Welcome. Welcome to the show, Jeannie. Okay, so I introduced you as an image consultant. Tell us, Jeannie, what does an image consultant do? Well, an image consultant helps companies and individuals improve their public image. Okay. And that is possible by addressing the A, B, Cs of image. We, now we also have D. So let me tell you what those are. Yes. A, A, B, C, appearance. image, okay, appearance for A and B. Appearance, behavior, C is communication, and D is, of course, digital image as we are in the digital age. Okay, so why is there a need for us to enhance our image? Ano ba dapat ang image ng isang anak ng Diyos or somebody who, who professes herself to be a Christian, a Catholic? Why do we need to improve for one, our image? We have, for one, it's because we have to always act according to our dignity as a child of God. Right. Also because of our uniqueness, our individuality. We are all made to the image and likeness of God. And therefore, we have this rational nature, which is a spark of the divine. Mm -hmm. And we know that our higher faculties are our intellect and our will, and we can be in control of our emotions, our passions, and we can have that self-mastery, and we can walk towards being more godlike as we are wayfarers <laughs> here on earth. And of course, that is with regards to our human nature in general, but as individuals, we all have our own story to, sit, to tell because each person is directly created by God, created body and soul to the image and likeness of God, and we are irrepeatable. No? So each person is unique. We have a set of talents, God-given talents, that we have to bear fruit with the way we behave, with the way we relate to others. And of course, we cannot forget the fact that ma man or this human person is a so social being and we perfect ourselves as we interact with others. And to be a servant leader, we should know how to reflect Christ more in our mm -hmm. daily activities as we relate to others, as we interact. And that is also shown with the way we present ourselves, with the way we dress, with the way we communicate with others. That's why it is important for us as servant leaders to improve that perception others have of us. Okay, so when and you that's say what you you all about yes, Jeannie, you mentioned about servant leaders. Uh, when you say servant leaders, what do you actually mean? When when we say servant leaders, we mean leaders who are not there to be served, but who serve like Christ serves. Yes, yes. yes. So, so we are, are. Yes, what is it, Rita? Are you saying like they are different from just you know the Sunday Catholics who go to mass? Para mas ibang level ang servant leaders. Yes, I think so. Because as, as Christians, as Catholics, we have to always be a witness of Christ wherever we are. And yes. no matter what our profession would be, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, or you're an accountant, you can be a servant leader. You can oh. be a reflection of Christ wherever you are. Yes, whatever we do, that is what you're saying, whatever yes. we do. Inside or outside the church, we are called to be servant leaders. So, Jeannie, tell us more about this A, B, C, Ds of image and, you know, the how impressions happen or what are the impact of first impressions. The A, B, C, Ds of image refer to appearance, behavior, communication, and digital presence. Right. Why are these important? Because whether you like it or not, we are judged like a book. They say don't judge a book by its cover, but many times that happens. Mm -hmm. And uh, we probably have um, a self-image of our own selves. And 
we have to learn how to communicate it to others because sometimes it does not match the perception others have of us. For example, if we think that we are, we are very um, capable in a certain area or we, we have uh, the knack no, for, for um, relating well with others, but it is not seen with our behavior, yes. then there is a break with the self-image we have and the perception others have of us. So let me go through the ABCs of image. Yes, please, Jimmy. Thank you. Okay, appearance. So whether you like it or not, you are judged by others in seven seconds. We are judged by others in seven seconds. And it would be unfair, but in reality, if we want to create a better image, we have to work hard on the way we groom, with the way we dress, and with the way we carry ourselves. Why grooming? Because Im impeccable grooming speaks a lot about the education and profession and the upbringing of a person, like your cleanliness and your hygiene level from head to toe. And then uh, the way you dress, your style, it speaks also about your taste, about how you honor your dignity with choosing uh, clothes that enhance, enhance your, your, your physical features and, your, and manifest your profession. And also colors, because do you know that the right colors can make us, can make us look more attractive to others, those colors that complement our skin tone. Oh. And then, yes. So are you saying that there is a color that fits a person, a, a, a color that is good for you may not necessarily good for another person? Iba-iba pala yung, yung dating ng color sa atin? That's right, Rita. Some people look better with warm colors while others look better with cool colors. And that's a kind of uh, service we image consultants can help individuals with, no? determining which colors work best for them. Uh, as regards behavior, I want to say first and foremost that we, we all believe in inner beauty, isn't it? Do you think yes. inner beauty is more important than physical beauty? It well, is more lasting, Mas tumatagal yung Yes, that's right. Because physical beauty fades away, isn't it? Uh -huh. uh, but... With inner beauty, we are speaking about the inner goodness of a person or the inner qualities. What would make a person more attractive? Because if someone is physically gifted but doesn't have a good character, that person can turn off others. Now, whether you're a man or a woman, no, you can turn off others. Diba? Um, pwede lang sabihin, oh, maganda siya, pero mataray. O masungit, di ba? So, oh, it, uh, oh, 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 oh. Uh, so, it breaks your image. It's even better to be plain looking, but attractive inside, no? With that inner beauty, because you can always enhance your physical appearance. So, that inner beauty is very important. And that is possible if we strive to develop virtues, no? If we're able to put into practice those values, those Christian values that we have, and we show it in our behavior. We develop those good dispositions, those inner dispositions, which we call virtues that help us do what, what is good. Or for example, diligence, industriousness. And of course, we have the supernatural virtues. We have faith, hope, charity. So we can also live that on a human plane. And that's how the supernatural virtues grow. And at the same time, we just don't do the good in the concrete. That's why etiquette and civility are important. Right? I can't just say, um, I want to be good. We have to show. We have to show how to be good, good in the concrete. Now, if we are grateful, then we say, thank you. And that's part of etiquette. Now, if we acknowledge the person, if we see the worth of the person, then we, we give a high note to greetings. Right? So mm -hmm. etiquette is really part of day-to-day -day interaction with our own family members, you know, with our friends, with our uh, co parishioners you know? So we cannot disregard this. You cannot say that you go to Mass and you don't mind the people. So, plada, ganon. You go to Mass every day or every Sunday. So if that's, if that, is the, that is why, as a servant leader, we have to show it also with how we relate to others, this faith that we have or this charity that we are trying to to live. The third would be 
communication. Communication yeah. skills, yes. Yeah. We don't only have to yeah. look good. So when we say look good, we're not saying you have to be physically attractive like a movie star, no? but we're trying to say that you have to be presentable. Okay. Uh, you don't only have to look good and be good. You also have to strive to communicate well with others. Many problems mm -hmm. start with miscommunications. No? Many uh, oh, yeah. uh -huh. charity would start with miscommunication. So we mm -hmm. have to take care of our wordings when we speak to people and show kindness always. No? And at the same time, on uh, Actions speak louder than words. That's why, as an image consultant, we also uh, give a lot of importance to nonverbal communication, right? Oh, are you the, talking here about, Jeannie, are you talking here about like body language? But, yeah, body language, uh -huh. right? Your facial expression, mm -hmm. one part of that would be a smile, no? to show that you are welcoming or accommodating. Uh, and then, uh, of course, now that we are in the new normal, because uh, in a business scenario, the usual way of greetings would be with, through a handshake, isn't it? Yes. But now we have those options of use doing the elbow bump <laughs> or the toe tap. Mm -hmm. So there are ways of showing it physically also with, uh, with those gestures. So, so those are ways our actions or our body language would actually second no? or, mm -hmm. or, or sustain no? those ideas that we want to communicate with others. Okay, so Jenny, in, in this communication thing, and you mentioned about body language, can you give us some examples, concrete examples of body languages na, na medyo negative yung dating sa tao, or as, as opposed to, you know, the positive body language? Because when you say servant leaders, you are in a position of influence, right? Yes. So it is important for servant leaders, therefore, to have a positive body language. So give us some tips. Papa, kasi minsan ang mga tao, hindi sila mindful eh. Uh, there, are mind, there are people na nakikita ko, very, very well-dressed, but not mindful of, you know, the way they look at the person that they are talking to or yung mga hand gestures nila or even the way they are sitting, standing, and walking. So give us some tips, Jeannie, on this, on the non-verbals. Kasi sabi mo nga kanina, in, in first impressions, what they see what sticks to the mind of the uh, of the person is the non-verbals. Yun yung unang nakikita eh. Even before we say anything, nakikita na agad the way we dress and our body language. So for the sake of our viewers, Dini, give us some tips on positive body language. Body language that can help you appear more professional and therefore able to influence others. So one would be to have a good eye contact with the people you are communicating with, no, when we ask favors, when we greet, no, it's good to maintain good eye contact because if we are talking to people but we're not looking at them, then it could be a sign of disrespect no, or a sign that we are hiding something or we are uh, ashamed. No? So that is part also of the confidence that we want to exude to others no, when we have good eye contact. And then, of course, and to take care also of open gestures when we communicate with others. Uh, that means, like, if, especially if we have to use our, our hands for expression, if you're giving a, a lecture, a presentation, like, right? Uh -huh. And then uh, another way would be to have proper voice and uh, power, especially with, whether you're, you're in the church or you're, in, you're at home in the office, like, to take care also of those, if you're in the church, to take care of those good manners when it comes to um, the, the liturgy, right? Right. Uh, or uh, genuflection or without the meal, like to, to respect, to respect the, the, the liturgical service. And then, of course, that is because we're talking about servant leaders. And then, uh, of course, I also mentioned it, it, it's always worth well, to smile, uh, to say things in a positive way. So those are way, um, those are very helpful if we want to get our message across. Uh -oh. What about you mentioned about posture? Ano bang dapat na posture ng you know our sitting, our standing? Ano ba yung klase ng posture that turns people off or posture that gives you a sense of power, a sense of being able to influence or yung para maniwala sa inyo yung tao, pa, paano ka ba dapat nakatayo? Paano ka ba dapat lumakad? For one, don't be so stiff. 
Because ah, the, sometimes, okay. isn't it, when they say, oh, okay, uh, stand, stand straight, diba? So people get so stiff, like parang military. Oh, so, so, eh, oh, oh. Just be very natural, right? Uh-huh. Keep your back straight, keep, keep your back aligned, and then uh, make sure that uh, you, even when you walk, you try to follow a straight line without being too conscious. Hindi, hindi man ito rampa, no? pero at least... Uh, hindi man then, ganoon, hindi man parang rumarampa ka. Oo, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> So, it, it's just a matter of, you know, uh, trying to maintain your dignity. That's yeah. the idea with good posture. Like, because if you slouch when you walk or when you talk, it can give that impression that you are not so confident, uh, that uh, you are not prepared or you, you lack confidence. You lack That's confidence. The <laughs> <message>. <laughs> bad effects but to bad postures, uh, bearing nothing, aside from, you know, the way people perceive you. May, may ill effects but to sa health natin or sa nararamdaman natin? Could it contribute to some pains in our bodies? I, I think, I guess so. Yeah, uh, back pains, etc. Although I'm not a health expert, but uh, when it comes to image, it contributes a lot to have good posture. Yes. Right? Because if you have good posture, like you have your chest out and your tummy in, right? Mm-hmm. And yeah. you can also speak from the diaphragm. So you're able also to project more when you're talking. You don't run out, out of breath. No? Mm-hmm. Like uh, you can maintain um, a conversation um, with a lot of, um, I'll use the term again, confidence, and also with uh, that dignity that is um, expected of you. I think it helps a lot because if you're only slouching, you also feel small. Mm-hmm. If you're slouching, you also yeah. feel small. You feel small, you feel a bit lethargic. So it's a matter also of psyching the body, you know, to right. okay. uh, like if you have heard, listen to the video of Ami Kadi about power poses, it helps a lot. Like if you, even before you have a presentation, you stretch a little, you, know, you do the Superman pose, because the, those kinds of gestures can make you feel bigger in that sense that not bigger in the sense of being uh, boastful or proud, but in the sense of having more, more confidence. Oh, yeah. God. So you mentioned earlier, Jeannie, about eye contact. Uh, give us some tips on how to make effective eye contact as opposed to staring. Kasi hindi ba minsan when you're talking with someone, parang naiilang ka kasi parang staring na yung nangyayari. Eh. So what is, how do you make good eye contact? Well, for one, is you can really look at the person in the eye. Uh, but of course, okay. we cannot maintain that for a long period of time. because Oo, oh, eh. oh, oh. masakit, di ba? Et cetera. <laughs> Or so one tip is you can look slightly upwards, um, slightly above the eyebrows, mm-hmm. this part of the forehead, you know, and the person will you're talking to will not have the impression that you're looking upwards, but will think that you are still talking to him or her, right? So it's one way to relax the eyes mm-hmm. also when you are doing the uh, when you are having a conversation. That is what we call the yeah. professional gaze when you look upwards. Especially look in, up. Yeah, when you, slightly upwards. Slightly. Especially when you're talking to professional colleagues and clients. Because the familiar gaze is when you look downwards, uh, towards the nose and mouth. And that's only done with uh, people who are close to you. Oh, like so, oh, okay. Because otherwise, if you are not close to the person and you are looking at the nose and the mouth, is that sending a different image? Yes, it could. Different message? Yes, it could. Or it can uh, give the person the impression that you're hard of hearing. <laughs> ah, <ganun> ba yun? <laughs> and sometimes we do not sure hear really. it, no? Yeah, so yeah, because those are all nonverbal expressions. Okay, so you mentioned about the digital presence. We are in the digital age, whether we like it or not, because of the pandemic, everything is virtual. So give us some tips on how to maintain a good image in the digital platform. Yeah, that's really a challenge for all of us, especially 
uh, the two of us, I guess, <laughs> because we're not we were not born in the digital age. <laughs> uh, we oh, are not. Okay. What do you call us? Uh, something we say uh, digital immigrants, <laughs> not me. <natives. laughs> we, uh, we have adapted. <laughs> well, for one, uh, of course, um, I'm not really a very techy person, but I can just mention that. But if we're talking about image, we have to have that consistency. That image that we're trying to project when we talk to people face to face is the same kind of image that we should try to communicate through social media. Okay. Right? One tip is to think before we post anything in our social media, example in Instagram or Facebook. Oh, you have to think before you post. Kasi di ba minsan when we are very happy or very angry, don't, parang minsan yeah. sa Facebook natin nilalabas yung emotions natin. Yeah. Are you saying that is not correct? That is not correct because mm -hmm. many times there have been uh, many issues of bashers, people get offended <laughs> with comments in social media and this can be bloated, right? Mm -hmm. and if you are an employee, you can get into trouble if it has to do with co-employees or your boss. So we really have to be careful of what we not to rant in social media, right? And not and to rant on social media. Yes. Because we yes. know and also I, at the same time to be very yeah, and to be very positive with what we, we post. So even about other people, <laughs> right? Family members, colleagues right. mm -hmm. at work, right? That's not the venue for private things. Oh, all right. So, so what, it's in social media, it becomes public. It becomes public. So what about photos? What are the, kasi misa, di ba, we have a nice picture of us and we just want to post it. And, you know, I do see a lot of posts from young people na, you know, they're in their bikinis, pag nasa beach. So what do you suggest? What kind of photos are good to pose so that we maintain that image, no? you that God-like image. It's always to think before you post. Always what message think. am I trying to send through this picture about myself, about my career, about my lifestyle, about my family? And mm -hmm. if you are able to answer that and you think that photo will contribute to your good image, why not? It has to contribute to your good image. Jeannie, you are also an etiquette consultant. Though you were educated by no less than Jacqueline Whitmore. So can you give our viewers some tips on proper etiquette during this time of pandemic? And maybe even outside you know, the time of pandemic, we hope that this will be over and etiquette is always good to practice. So give us some tips, Jeannie, so that we maintain that that image of being a child of God, of being a good Christian, so that we are able to yes. influence others. Oh. Yes. No matter what the circumstances are, we always have to go back to the principles of etiquette. And I would like to summarize them according to the author or the authority in etiquette, who is Emily Post. Emily Post, yes. So those are courtesy. Courtesy honesty, and refinement. Courtesy, honesty, and refinement. Tell us more, Jeannie, about those three principles that we always need to remember. For one is as we, we aim to act as a child of God with our human dignity, we have to consider that we, all, that we perfect ourselves as we interact with others. And as we interact with others, it always should be with courtesy, refinement, and honesty. Those are the principles of any behavior. Because no matter what the circumstances are, as Jacqueline Whitmore also says, etiquette evolves as time evolves. Like now, we have the new normal etiquette. Oh, my. We just have to go back to the principles. Ah. Because even if you are not so knowledgeable about a particular etiquette, Example, you go abroad, diba? Rita, you also teach this cross-cultural yeah. etiquette. You go abroad, you go to a certain country, and you're not so familiar with how they do things. But if you have this concern to show respect and, and um, loyalty and honesty to people, then you will learn those things. Because, because ways of doing 
things, etiquette, they are teachable and learnable. Oh, so it's teachable a matter of our disposition. Of Kasi Jeannie, some yeah, people, and, when, when they think of etiquette, it's parang for, you know, it's for like an afternoon high tea for mga very rich people, for mga ambassador level. What I'm hearing from you is really it's about courtesy and uh, respect for other people. Yes. So that, that, that's, those are the basis no, for good etiquette because as etiquette, as an etiquette consultant, we shouldn't think that etiquette is just a list of formalities you know, for a special occasions or state yes. dinners or if you have to meet the Queen of England. You know, it's oh, right. Yeah, right. But we practice etiquette even at home with the kasambahay, with the family members, you know, with, the, with, like, with, the, like, with your children. So it can be practiced anywhere in ordinary circumstances because we celebrate each person we meet. Oh, that is a good thing. To, and, ang ganda no, Jeannie, we celebrate each person that we meet. So can you because give us some tips? is a reflection of Christ. Right. Then we all have to see Christ in others because we are talking about etiquette from the context of servant leader, no? Yes. So can you give us some tips on on, you know, proper etiquette as a servant leader or, you know, in our everyday lives. So because what you're saying is, it's not only for special occasions, for, but for our daily life, even at home. So sa bahay kaya, ano kaya yung etiquette that we can practice and teach the younger generation, even our helpers? Always to say thank you, right? Thank you. The same and for right. if you have helpers, not to just boss them around. <laughs> <laughs> to do things that you yourself can do that you know that you yourself can do and uh, to do your share of the house chores I think that's part of living in a community that's living in a family you know? and and always uh, saying thank you please basic mm-hmm. thing that basic we, thing. the children we also practice what about in the context of in, the in the, dining, in the dining room, no? Basic etiquette. Don't talk when your mouth is you full. No? Use the proper utensils. Oh, even if we're just at home, even if we don't have a party, like day in and day out, no? So that's a way of being consistent with how we show consideration for others. Even okay. if your food is just, ano, sinigang. Kailangan may etiquette pa sa pagkain ng sinigang. You take care of, you know, details of etiquette at meals. That is a way of showing charity to others. Now, Jeannie, if they want to know more about the ABCDs of image, how to practice etiquette in their daily lives, where can they go? Tell them about your, your company. You can reach us. Uh, through our website, uh, I represent Flare Image Consultancy. Our, our website is uh, www.imagebyflare.com or you can also reach us through our FB page and our Instagram account. Okay, so they can, you, you teach that, Jeannie, not only to, to big groups, yes. companies, but also to individuals. Yes. Okay, Jeannie, so any last words about etiquette and behavior and or any tips that you, additional tips that you want to give our viewers before we close? Well, for one, I would like to say uh, again, thank you for inviting me, for giving me the chance to share okay. some <laughs> tips on uh, etiquette and on uh, how to enhance your human dignity and, your, and to be equipped to be a better servant leader you know, through improving your image or enhancing your image. So those are really very important because uh, as I said, we just don't want to do good uh, in the abstract. We have to show it in the concrete. We have to show respect to others with the way we interact with them, with the way we dress, when we dress, isn't it? There's this uh, phrase that is dress, we dress for respect. So it's also a part of etiquette. When we dress, when we dress properly, then we are showing respect for others. When we talk to people with refinement, what do we mean refinement? No, like to avoid uh, rude language, cursing. No, then we are celebrating the person. No? So 
those are some tips that we have to keep in mind whenever, especially when we are not in the mood, when we are angry. Yes. When we are bad trip. <laughs> okay. Then so it is really more a struggle. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, Jeannie, for the words of wisdom that you have shared our viewers today. So let us all remember to celebrate our individuality. Celebrate thank you also. Thank you, Jeannie. Celebrate other people by showing them respect and kindness so that we may be able to influence them to become better children of God. This is your host, Rita Daily, reminding you today, haba-habaan po ang pasensya sa magtatang buhay, parang tayo.